Welcome to the 2021 induction ceremony of the Alpha Chapter of the Phi Beta Kappa Society in the state of New Jersey. I am Carolyn Mayling, Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education for Rutgers New Brunswick. First, congratulations to our inductees. This honor is a recognition of your talent, hard work, and perseverance. I also want to thank your family and friends for attending the ceremony with you today and supporting you throughout your academic journey. In today's ceremony, we will present the history and traditions of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. We will also recognize our inductees by name in alphabetical order by school of matriculation. Following the reading of the names, President Jonathan Holloway will join us to provide brief remarks and congratulate the inductees. We will begin our ceremony with greetings and words of congratulations from Chancellor Chris Malloy and Provost Francine Conway. I am Chris Malloy, Chancellor of Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Congratulations on being inducted into Phi Beta Kappa. This is a significant achievement. Only 10% of U.S. institutions have Phi Beta Kappa chapters, and less than 10% of their juniors and seniors are invited to join. On behalf of our campus community, I commend you for your talent, intelligence, and drive, and for your resilience in facing the challenges of the past year. I wish you great success as you work to realize your goals and dreams, and I am grateful to have you serve as outstanding ambassadors for Rutgers University. Thank you and good luck. Dear students, honored guests, and families, Phi Beta Kappa is the nation's oldest and most prestigious academic honor society. Five students founded the society at the College of William and Mary in 1776, believing in the power of ideas and informed debates on their time's most pressing issues. I imagine the journey was not without challenges, and I guess these founding students made mistakes along the way. But much like the visionary students who founded the society, you persevered. I want to leave you with this brief anecdote. Once there was a very successful bank president who a reporter was interviewing. The reporter's opening question, what is the secret of your success? The response, two words, right decisions. The reporter, how do you make those right decisions? The response, one word, experience. The reporter, but how do you get experience? The response, two words, wrong decisions. Your curiosity and courage to pursue meaningful learning experiences have led to this moment. You were not afraid to make decisions. I am sure you have seen your fair share of challenges while on your academic journey. You have transformed your experiences into a domain for learning rather than self-condemnation. Today, you join the ranks of many Phi Beta Kappa alumni, represented in nearly every field, including 17 U.S. presidents, 42 Supreme Court justices, and more than 150 Nobel laureates. Today, you too can share your story of how you made the right decisions. Congratulations again on your accomplishments. Thank you, Chancellor Malloy and Provost Conway. Now Matt Matsuda, Dean of the Honors College and Professor of History, will provide a brief description of the history and traditions of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. The history of the Phi Beta Kappa Society on December 5, 1776, a group of young men, students at the College of William and Mary in Virginia, meeting in the Apollo Room of the Raleigh Tavern, Williamsburg, formed the Phi Beta Kappa Society, which they dedicated to high purposes with 18th century elegance. In the Phi Beta Kappa Handbook, you will find a brief account of the early days of society in Virginia and of the fortunate establishment at Yale in 1780 and Harvard in 1781 of New England branches which ensured the perpetuation and propagation of the society 
when the parent chapter became inactive. During the following half century, four more chapters were founded at Dartmouth in 1787, Union 1817, Bowdoin in 1825, and Brown in 1830. Then after a pause of 15 years, a slightly more rapid expansion began in 1845. At the end of the next half century of growth, 25 chapters had been founded. The need of a closer unity and greater uniformity of practices led in 1883 to the organization of the present national body, the United Chapters of Phi Beta Kappa. At present, there are 276 chapters. In 1875, the Society extended the privilege of membership to women. In 1926, the 150th anniversary was made the occasion of raising an endowment fund and for exploring ways of encouraging scholarship in the educational institutions of the country. More recently, the Society has joined in the defense of freedom of teaching and inquiry and the liberal ideal in education. In 1877, the first Phi Beta Kappa Graduate Association was founded in New York City by Elihu Root, distinguished lawyer and statesman, was joined by other Phi Beta Kappa members in organizing the association. There are now approximately 50 associations in major population centers throughout the country that offer members the opportunity to continue an active affiliation with the Phi Beta Kappa after graduation. More information appears in your handbook for new members. The Rutgers chapter was organized on February 22, 1869 by charter, granted by the Alpha chapter of New York at Union College. The Rutgers College chapter is the Alpha chapter in the state of New Jersey and was the 20th chapter to be established in the nation. Upon the graduation in 1922 of the first class in the New Jersey College for Women, a section was instituted in that division of the university now known as Douglas College. Students are now inducted from all New Brunswick units in the Camden College of Arts and Sciences. Since 1948, with the authorization of the Senate, Qualified students in the Newark College of Arts and Sciences have been elected by the chapter. In 1958, the National Council authorized the establishment of the Newark College section and was installed on December 5th of that year. The original organization at William & Mary was a secret society, and the oath transmitted to the first six northern branches contained a promise to preserve inviolate the secrets of the same. As a result of the anti-Masonic agitation of the 1830s, most of the branches followed the lead of the Alpha of Massachusetts and repealed the injunction of secrecy. They retained, however, the symbol or key with its symbolic engraving and the interpretation of those symbols and other signs of the society, which have continued to constitute if part of the form of initiation. The present standard key of the society, except for its smaller size and for the lower stem, added by the branch at Yale, is substantially the same as the original medal of the Alpha of Virginia. On the obverse, the medal bore the Greek letters Phi Beta Kappa, the initials of the words Philosophia Bu Kubernetes, love of wisdom and guide of life. In the upper left-hand corner, three stars symbolize the aims of the society, friendship, morality, and literature. A pointing hand in the lower corner symbolized aspiration. On the reverse side, the letters SP represented the second motto of the society, Societas Philosophiae. Below them was engraved the historic date, December 5th, 1776, and above them the name of the member was sometimes inscribed. The signs of the society which tradition has preserved are two. When members meet, they greet each other by drawing the backs of their index and middle fingers of the right hand across their lips from left to right, thus apparently affirming that their lips were sealed. They followed this sign with a handshake, one of the traditional forms of which will be revealed to you at the end of the ceremony of initiation. The charge to the new members will be given by the presiding officer of the chapter. Hello, I'm Susan Lawrence, Vice Dean for Undergraduate Education, Professor of Political Science, and President of the Rutgers Phi Beta Kappa Chapter. I will now deliver the charge to the initiates. The Phi Beta Kappa Society holds education in the liberal arts as its particular focus and commitment. 
Chapter charters are granted only to those institutions of higher education that demonstrate dedication to scholarly excellence in the liberal arts. Those chapters invite to membership only those students who have demonstrated the highest achievements in pursuing their studies, including pursuing the study of world languages. All of you today have demonstrated this achievement. There is no substitute for the basic tenets of a liberal arts education in its full breadth and depth. It is the development by study, training, and mental discipline of the capacity to make thoughtful, informed decisions and to evaluate ideas and concepts without bias and with clarity of perspective. A liberal arts education is the basis for appreciation of what has come before and the willingness to consider and perhaps appreciate new ideas, new theories, new facts. Phi Beta Kappa believes that knowledge liberates us from the dogmas and doctrinal constraints of limited experience. Education, in its broadest sense, in its liberal meaning, is what protects us all from the enslavement of ignorance and prejudice. It is what saves us from the domination of foolishness. This ceremony today is the public acknowledgement of your achievements as students of the liberal arts. But your induction today is only the beginning of the challenges and successes that lie before you. As we continue to face the challenges of the 21st century, it's incumbent upon us to employ and expand our wisdom and our intelligence if the world before us is to become a better world. Not merely a better world technologically, scientifically, but a better world humanly. We must extend our abundance to those about us without the blessings of abundance. We must speak out against tyranny and oppression, whether national, racial, or ethnic. We must protect the arts and the freedom that allows the arts to thrive. We must always support the expression of ideas, even those we abhor. Today, when we are faced with a world of resources and riches, and also a world of poverty and violence and indifference, the Society of Phi Beta Kappa continues to represent the best in intellectual discipline and achievement. We welcome you as members of this society. We know that you will continue to be the strength of a new generation. Leave here with our best wishes for your futures and with our belief in you as champions of an education in the liberal arts. Fellow members of Phi Beta Kappa, I have the honor to introduce the Rutgers University students who have been elected to membership by the Alpha Chapter of the State of New Jersey. The following students from the Camden College of Arts and Sciences have been elected to membership by the Alpha Chapter of New Jersey. Lisa May Villarbia Farrow. Abigail Eileen Connor. Milani Cruz Stokes. Angelica Fernandez Lopez. Krista Gonzalez. Abigail Juarez. Christopher Prieto. Sujay Radna. Zanab Rizvi. Karen Esther Rodas, Janelli K. Santos, Nitan Shanas, Adam Y. Solomon, Jose David Zarazua, Alexandra Zarefis. The following students from the School of Business have been elected to membership by the Alpha Chapter of New Jersey. Thomas Fabiak, Christian Buren, Sumatra Chattopadhyay, Abhishek Shetty, Zoe Claire Wang. The following students from the School of Engineering have been elected to membership by the Alpha Chapter of New Jersey. Milos Seskar, Feha Khan, The following students from the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences have been elected to membership by the Alpha Chapter of New Jersey. Wamia Siddiqui, Yining Wang. The following students from the School of Arts and Sciences have been elected to membership by the Alpha Chapter of New Jersey. Gaurav Argawal, Miha Argawal, Iftikhar Ali, 
Kai Allen, Ruchi Aluwalia, Niha Aluwalia, Alexa J. Alvarez, Declan Alvarez, Danny Gumarez Amade Rodriguez de Santos, Ava Dawn Anabogu, Anna Clara Antal, Yonatan Mateo Aviv, Chloe Marie Azadigan, Camilla Azabel, Tanvi Benoda, Janelle Zapanta Baul, Barbara Benda, Atul K. Badapurlu, Isabel Bierman, Callista Madison Blanchard, Nikpreet Bopuri, Shristi Bowes, Joseph Dominic Campisano, Georgia Macedo Cardoso, Shruti Churavu, Elizabeth Grace Chiu, Lauren S. Choi, Assam Chaudhry, Alexander B. Cohen, Joyce Kui, Jillian Cozzolino, Junyan Dai, Parthi Dasandi, Jillian Dower, Ashley Rose Disrosier, Monica Malerio Diaz, Nicholas A. DiGirolamo, Ankitha Dindigal, Lauren Ann Ellis, Laura Esteban, Marina Ford, Lubinka Ivana Geraldo Petkovich, Jenna Gannon, Alicia Giffen, Mario Rose Mantala Go, Brandon Hugo Gomez, Annie F. Goner, Gianna Graziano, Aldesia Bonet Green, Shani Saratoga Gregg, Kevin Guo, Anusha Gupta, Matthew Hahn, Duncan Hardiman, John J. Hennessy, Raphael Hernandez, Sophia May Higgins, Nathan Samuel Hudson, Samuel Iofel, Svitha Sri Jayakumar, Saishi Jiao, Yosef Amihai Kagan, Dorva Kakad, Anusha Kemburu, Fiona R. Nyes, Caleb Jude Kubure, Niha Regini Kuduru, Rohit Kumar, Samantha Lee, Samuel Edwin Lay, Liliana Luzi, Michelle Liang, William David Locke, Stephanie Loy, Michelle Liu, Serena Luckhoff, Carolyn Mabry, Miranda Madrazo, Samantha Page Magistry, Raj Malhotra, Megan Atwood Mantha, Daniel Francis Markham, Eleanor Catherine McAlpine, Julia McMillan, Rachel Mary McRae, Kelly Taylor McSpirit, Mary Grace Mahalik, Rohan Mehra, Veronica Malekstein, Zanliang Meng, Maria Menteas, Casey Claire Milan, Isabella Napolitano, Brianna Elizabeth Newman, Lauren Nickerson, Max Nunez, Oluwadamiola Vinabo Olaro, Shadal Dulal Oza, Elif Naz Ozan, Brandon Michael Padover, Haley Kamukant Parik, Mugda Perulikar, Matali Patel, Priya Patel, Kishan 
Patel, Mon Patel, Gabriel Perez, Neha Piri, Shannon Perkins, Eliza Kate Peterson, Anne Pixta, Aparna Raghupathi, Liam Paul Rahab, Zabir Raman, Matthew Ward Ramna, Shania Ranmarie, Neil Rana, William Robert Rarich, Saqib Abrar Razul, Jake Andrew Radigan, Cecilia Ritaco, Ryan Thomas Rodriguez, Amy Levy Rosen, Julian Carol Rosenblum, Ashley Grace Runyon, Neha Saju, Juliet Rose Skelza, Aaron Shiner, Natia Selvaraj, Vahini Shori, Anusha Siddharamana, Devon Melcote Singh, Anthony Smith, Jackson Daniel Snellman, Anthony Sakin, Abraham Ayal Summer, Diana Anna Stahula, Lawrence Stevens, Jenna Elizabeth Suarez, Shoyu Sun, Jacqueline Sun, Rhea Sutaria, Rhea Swain, Nicholas M. Sweeney, Alicia Tawari, Gianna Marie Torino, Sam Tainuan Tran, Jacqueline Marie Twaddle, Isabella L. Vidro, Mallory Schuyler Bolbrecht, Laura Vorbach, Tanvi Wagley, Lita Wang, Zemaine Wang, Jamie Marilyn White, Austin Walensky, Ricky Xiang, Joyce Zhu, Audrey Grace Zhu, Maria Zhu, Neha N. Yunus, Alan Xiu Zhang, Songyan Zhang, Feiyu Zhang, Ruki Zhou, Susanna Chu, Mary Lorraine Solway. And now, Rutgers President Jonathan Holloway will give the keynote address. The story thus far by Lucille Clifton. So they went out, clay and morning star, following the bright back of the woman. As she walked past the cherubim, turning their fiery swords past the winged gate, into the unborn world, chaos fell away, before her like a cloud, and everywhere seemed light, seemed glorious, seemed very Eden. To the newly elected members of Phi Beta Kappa, it brings me great pleasure to welcome you to this very special society. And while we are not conducting this induction ceremony in person, we ought not ignore the importance of this moment and what it says about you and your hard work, your teachers and their hard work, and your families and their hard work. Endeavoring together in some alchemy that is only yours to know, you were able to produce an academic record that is exceptional and merits every bit of recognition that we can muster in our digitized world. Because you have earned these accolades, it is my sincere hope that you will embrace the excitement of this occasion. You earn this. Having said that, it is also my hope that soon enough your excitement will mellow into something called reflection. And then, when the time is right, that your reflection will morph into perspective and wisdom. This sounds a bit intense, I know, but joining the oldest and most prestigious academic honor society in this country suggests to me that you can handle a bit of intensity. Further, I feel it would be an insult to the rigor that you brought to your studies at Rutgers if I let you go from this event without challenging you and those brilliant minds of yours. I began this talk with a poem by Lucille Clifton. This particular poem is part of a series about creation, Adam, Eve, Lucifer, and knowledge. 
The title of the poem, The Story Thus Far, is a clever tongue-in-cheek marker of time. The poem takes us to a moment when Eve guides Adam, Clay, and Lucifer, Morning Star, toward discovery. To them, the unborn world she shows them is glorious and Edenic. But what is going on here? If the world they saw was very Eden, does that mean that they are already contemplating leaving the garden for something new? Also, if this is the moment of departure, it certainly doesn't sound like a banishment. What is Lucifer doing there in the first place? Hadn't he already completed his work? And then there's the fact that Eve is leading the way. Or was the unnamed woman in the poem actually God? Clifton intentionally provides us with more questions than answers. Her words give us something familiar, but then they destabilize the familiar and lead us toward uncertainty. How is this poem helpful to the reader? How is it helpful to you? I return to the title, The Story Thus Far. Clinton, as the creator, knew exactly what she was doing. For me, the title of the poem is its genius. It signifies a moment in time, something that is but a first step in a long journey, one in which the traveler is going from the known into an unknown that seems at first glance to be sublime. You, of course, are the traveler. And while I am not the one to know whether Rutgers has been your Eden or not, what I can say is that you are now standing at the exciting cusp of the unknown, perhaps the sublime. But remember, this is merely the story thus far. Questions abound for me, and once this moment of celebration fades into a moment of reflection, these will become questions for you. What is on the other side of the gates that Clifton's cherubim guard so carefully? What traveler will you find on the other side? Will it be glorious? Will it be Edenic? You are headed from Rutgers to do many great things. We all know this. You will do them in laboratories, in classrooms, in studios, in auditoria, in libraries, in tidal pools, all of which are places of discovery. And with time and with your intellect, these will become places of your expertise. When you arrive at that moment, for some this will take but a few years, for others it will take a decade or more, I hope that you will have developed a sense of perspective, something those of us at my age call wisdom, that allows you to see the world in fully nuanced and complex ways. When that moment arrives, it is my sincere hope that you will have come to understand that knowledge, expertise, and mastery can be found in the most ethereal and the most mundane places. Further, I hope you will have come to appreciate that the people who possess that knowledge, expertise, and mastery can look like anyone. Indeed, they will look like everyone if you are prepared to open your eyes to them. With whatever wisdom I possess, I can promise you that there is no one type of person who embodies excellence. I can also tell you that there is no one type of person who is uniquely able to unlock the mysteries of the universe. The universe is too complicated to tolerate such simplicity. I expect that the education you received at Rutgers has prepared you to understand this, even if you are not quite ready to appreciate it. As I close, I turn again to Lucille Clifton. Here, in a poem called Study the Masters, Clifton talks about the complexity of expertise and the nuances of the undiscovered. She speaks about what we lose when we are not prepared to explore the unknown what we will never understand if we keep our hearts and our minds closed to the shimmering brilliance all around us. By asking us to study the masters, she is encouraging us to divest ourselves of our arrogance in order to gain the valuable perspective the world demands of us if we are ever to realize a better future. Phi Beta Kappans, for you this is a moment of wonder, as it should be. You have worked hard to get here and you should be justly proud of this result. I know that I am proud of you. Celebrate this accomplishment, come to reflect upon it and what you can learn about this marked moment in time, and then, in time, be prepared to do the hard work of cultivating in others, no matter what they look like or from which neighborhood they hail, the same sort of mastery that you started to cultivate at Rutgers. 
study the masters. Like my Aunt Timmy, it was her iron or one like hers that smoothed the sheets the master poet slept on, home or hotel. What matters is he lay himself down on her handiwork and dreamed. She dreamed too, words, some Cherokee, some Maasai, and some huge and particular as hope. If you had heard her chanting as she ironed, you would understand form and line and discipline and order and America. Once more, congratulations to our newest Phi Beta Captains. I am Chuck Keaton, Academic Dean of the Honors Program in the School of Arts and Sciences and Professor of Physics and Astronomy. I will now administer the promise of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. In accordance with the rules of this chapter, and in consequence of our good opinion of your intellectual and moral character, supported by your record of high attainment in the university, you have been selected as worthy of becoming members of Phi Beta Kappa. Your names have been submitted to the scrutiny of the constitutional electors of the chapter and have met with their approval. You have been formally notified of your election, and by your presence here, you signify your desire to be enrolled as members of this ancient and honorable society. By rules of this chapter, initiates should personally pledge their allegiance to the society. I will now administer the Phi Beta Kappa promise. Do you solemnly promise that you will be true and faithful to this society, that you will obey the laws thereof, and that in the election of members, you will have paramount regard for moral character and scholarly attainment? If you so promise, will you raise your right hand and say, I do. Now you will receive congratulations from Fred Lawrence, the president and CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. He will also demonstrate the secret handshake. Hi, I'm Fred Lawrence, Secretary and CEO of the Phi Beta Kappa Society. Congratulations on your election to Phi Beta Kappa. If no one has shown you the secret handshake yet, it's my pleasure to do so now. The secret handshake actually goes back centuries to when we really were a secret society, and the symbol when two members pass each other on the street was to take these two fingers, draw them across the mouth to say our lips are sealed. Well, our lips aren't sealed anymore. We want the whole world to know you're a member of Phi Beta Kappa, but when two members meet, it's those same two fingers clasped, and that's the secret handshake. I really look forward someday and hopefully very, very soon to meet all of you in person and to be able to share a proper Phi Beta Kappa greeting. Congratulations and welcome to the Phi Beta Kappa family. By election of the chapter and by your assent to its pledge, you have fully satisfied the society's requirements for initiation. I therefore declare you members of the Alpha Chapter of Phi Beta Kappa Society in the state of New Jersey, authorized to wear its key as a badge and to participate in its meetings. It is now my pleasure to welcome you as members of the chapter. Congratulations once again on your tremendous accomplishments. Thank you.